Well, I, I can tell by the cliche music that some kind of mystery has brought us to High Street in Lancaster, New Hampshire today. <laughs> That's true, Ray. This week we're on the trail of a murderer. Ooh, a true crime whodunit. I like it. And in this case, it's a whodunit a lot. More than one murder, Jeff? In this case, maybe as many as six murders. Wow. All right. So we're looking for a potential serial killer. That we are. This week, we're in Lancaster trying to solve the Bugby murders. Hi, I'm Jeff Belanger, and welcome to episode 137 of the New England Legends podcast. If you give us about 10 minutes, we'll give you something strange to talk about today. And I'm Ray Osher. Thanks for joining us as we crisscross New England, chronicling every single legend we can find one story at a time. And we do that through this weekly podcast. And you should subscribe right now if you don't already, because it's free on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, or wherever you get your shows. And we also explore legends on the New England Legends television series, and you can watch that right now on Amazon Prime and through our website, OurNewEnglandLegends.com. And we can't do it without the support of our Patreon patrons. So true. They're the ones sponsoring this week's episode and covering our growing expenses. Thank you, guys. Especially during these difficult times, too. These legendary listeners kick in just $3 per month and get early access to new episodes, plus bonus episodes and content that no one else gets to see or hear. Just head over to patreon.com slash New England Legends to become a bigger part of the movement. Okay, so let's get hunting this possible serial killer. All right, but first, a little more about this town. Okay. Lancaster is a small western New Hampshire town located right on the border with Vermont in the northern part of the state. The population today, just about 3,300 people. This is small town New England all the way. Quick fun fact, punk singer Gigi Allen is from Lancaster. No kidding. Yeah. Uh, So if... You folks know who that is. That's kind of mind-blowing that he's from a tiny little town like this. And if you don't know who that is, then maybe it's a testament to just how small this town is that G.G. Allen is its (laughs) most notable resident. That's a good point. So, Ray, uh, do you have your magnifying glass? Check. And your Sherlock Holmes hat? I got it. Okay, good, because we're going to need both as we explore this Lancaster caper. So let's head back to July of 1880 and investigate. It's mid-July here at the high street home of Dr. Frank Bugby. Bugby lives in this house with his wife, Maria, and their daughter, Hattie, who's just 14 years old. They also have a servant girl named Hannah Reagan. And right next door to the Bugbys is the Town family. In that house is Mr. Barton Town, his wife, Harriet, and Miss Nellie Webb, a young woman they had taken in as a child. Now, it's important to note that Maria Bugby is the daughter of Mr. and Mrs. Town, so it's a cozy little extended family right next door. Now, a little bit more about Nellie. When Nellie was very young, her mother set fire to a barn and was deemed unfit to raise a child. Yeah, that would do it. Right. So Nellie French, which is the name she was born with, was sent to live with Colonel Webb of Lancaster, who adopted her. Sadly, Colonel Webb died three years later. So Nellie was sent to live with the town family and has been here ever since. All right, got it. So that's a pretty rough start for a kid. Now, everyone in both houses gets along pretty well. They help each other out, they share meals, and look out for one another. It's nice. That is nice. Until tragedy strikes in the form of diphtheria. On July 18th, young Hattie Bugby passes away from the illness. Diphtheria is a bacteria that creates this thick covering in the back of the throat. It causes the throat to constrict, the neck to swell up, and makes breathing difficult. In some cases, like Hattie's, it's fatal. The loss of Hattie is sad, of course. I mean, both the Bugby and town families are heartbroken. But in these times, people do die from illness. It's just bad luck, I guess. The only problem is the Bugby luck is seemingly about to go from bad to worse. Well, what now? Well, just five days after Hattie's death, Mrs. Bugby becomes violently ill and dies almost immediately. That's horrible. It's poor family. Well, it gets worse, Jeff. Within another week, the Bugby's servant girl, Hannah Reagan, also gets sick and dies. And then Mr. Bugby finds himself not feeling well. It turns out diphtheria is highly contagious. Now, Dr. Bugby should know that. So is this the case of a family not taking proper precautions when there's an illness floating around? Well, that's possible. But then Dr. Bugby recovers enough to make the journey to see his brothers about 60 miles northwest in Derby Line, Vermont. I should mention that both of Dr. Bugby's brothers are also physicians. So he's in good hands. He is. And soon he makes a full recovery. Mm, That's good. His brothers believe he was ill with a combination of diphtheria and blood poisoning, but he seems to be on the mend now. Feeling better, Dr. Bugby returns to Lancaster, New Hampshire, with a demijohn of medical whiskey in hand to resume his duties as a physician. 
And as soon as he's back in Lancaster, he gives the whiskey to Miss Nellie Webb with the instructions to give the medicine to Mr. and Mrs. Town should they show any sign of illness. So Nellie nods, heads back to her room in the townhouse. Dr. Bugby is heartbroken to be back home in his empty house, but he figures getting back to his medical duties will take his mind off his recent losses. Sure. Unfortunately, he doesn't get too much medical work because within days, he becomes ill again. For days, his condition gets worse. He can't eat. He can't hold any food down. He asks his doctor friends who are examining him what they think is killing him. But only one ventures a guess. I would say, Frank, it appears to be arsenic poisoning. Dr. Bugby's battle ends on September 6th at the age of 43. In less than two months, an entire household of people have perished. A household that includes a medical doctor, no less. The local board of health investigates to see if there's maybe poor drainage or some other explanation as to why these folks died from diphtheria and blood poisoning. But they find nothing. Locals chalk it up to bad luck and they move on. It's now autumn. And at least one person in the townhome has a reason to celebrate. What's happening? Nellie Webb is getting married. She's getting hitched to a railroad conductor named Bert Mayo. Ah, getting hitched. Railroad. Uh, See what you did there. (laughs) I'm sorry, I couldn't help it. So does Nellie leave the town family at this point? She does not. She's been living with them since her childhood, and it's a place she and her husband can live for now. And there's certainly room for one more person at the house. Okay, got it. Now, things get quiet for the next month or so as the leaves outside change color and then drop. And now it's November. And Mrs. Town, she's not feeling too well. At this point, after seeing what happened next door, Mr. Town is on edge. But at least they have Dr. Bugby's medicinal whiskey. Nellie pours out the whiskey for Harriet. And in just a couple of days, Harriet is dead. After Nellie's death, Nellie gives the bottle of medicinal whiskey to Mr. J.W. Weeks, who is the administrator of Mr. Town's estate. She tells him that he might need it after being around so much sickness here at the town's home. Mr. Weeks thanks her and places the bottle in his safe, should he need it. Man, this poor family. Mm. I mean, they lose everyone next door, and now this. It's a lonely fall and winter for Mr. Town, but life goes on. Until it can't. Oh, no. Now yeah, what? Yeah. It's now February of 1881, and now Barton Town takes ill. Oh. And then Barton Town dies. That's six people in seven months. Well, I don't think you're the only one that thinks that looks suspicious, Jeff. So J.W. Weeks, you may remember him. He's the administrator of Mr. Town's estate. Sure, yeah. Well, Barton's will stipulates that though his property will pass into the hands of his son, who lives across the country in Oregon, Nellie can live in the home for as long as she likes after his death. Okay, I'm <laughs> getting it. Right? So suddenly we have someone who would have a motive to get rid of the Town family. Because Nellie has something to gain. I mean, a house, all to herself and her husband. And that's exactly what J.W. Weeks thinks also. Okay, but why kill the Bugby family? Because Maria Bugby is the daughter of Mr. and Mrs. Town. Oh, right, okay. The families are so close. If only Barton and Harriet Town die, there's no doubt the Bugbys will get involved in the estate. According to Weeks, the Bugbys would have to be taken out of the way. Okay, wait a minute. That whiskey that Nellie gave to Mr. Weeks after Harriet's death? Yes, Weeks thought about that too. So he runs to his safe, opens the door, and has the whiskey tested. And that's when he finds there's arsenic in the whiskey. Poison. Poison. But not just any old arsenic. An amateur would add arsenic you can get at the general store. Okay. The stuff doesn't really dissolve well. You need your victim to swallow the liquid in the undissolved powder inside. Okay. The arsenic in this whiskey was Fowler's Solution, which had the arsenic already dissolved. Okay, so the killer's smart enough to hide it pretty well. And now all eyes are on Nellie. Mm, I bet. She had the motive. She now has the house. There are six bodies, and J.W. Weeks is in possession of what may be a murder weapon. So Nellie is arrested for the murder of six people while police and doctors investigate this case. Now they exhume the bodies of all the deceased. They perform autopsies and test the blood and the contents of the stomach. First, it's ruled that young Hattie Bugby had signs of diphtheria, but also arsenic in her system. Okay, well that sounds like murder to me. Next, Mrs. Maria Bugby, there's poison in the system, but also signs of diphtheria. All right, so inconclusive. Right. Then we have the Bugby servant, young Hannah Reagan, 
also signs of diphtheria. So it's ruled natural causes, but still suspicious. Right. Then there's Dr. Frank Bugby. He's got arsenic in his system. Boom. That's murder. Absolutely. Mrs. Harriet Town had no signs of diphtheria and was considered in fine health. Also arsenic in her system. Murder, I tell you. Finally, we have Barton Town, who was found to have arsenic in his system. Another murder. Everyone in Lancaster is shocked. As is the nation, because news travels fast as the newspapers pick this story up all across the country. Nellie is the only suspect. And though Nellie is the only obvious suspect, because she has the most gain, she also has the sympathy of folks in town. Oh. She's an upstanding member of her church. She's considered pretty. Okay. They figured there's no way she could have done this. But that's not what J.W. Weeks believes. Not only that, he now believes the medical whiskey Nellie gave him was intended to take him out of the picture as well. Once the case goes to trial, Nellie is found innocent. She's free to go. And with no other suspects, the people of Lancaster are left to forever wonder what happened. And that brings us back to today. Okay, there's more to tell you about this. Of course, people in town remain suspicious as to what happened. I mean, two families living Mm. next door to each other and all of them dying doesn't just happen. It turns out a lot more fuel was poured on the rumor mill fire just a few years later in 1887. That would be six years after the death of Barton Town. Right. So what happened? An author named Mary Hatch publishes a book called The Upland Mystery that told this story as a fictionalized work. But it was so close to the real story that anyone with any knowledge of the case could tell easily which character was based on which real-life person. Okay, so why was this book so scandalous? In Mary Hatch's fiction, she implies that Nellie Webb had an inappropriate relationship with Dr. Frank Ah. Bugby. Right, so this affair is what started all of the murder. It was an effort to get the rest of the family out of the way so that they could be together. At some point, he must have told her that he didn't want to see her anymore. And so Nellie moves on, figures she'll marry some dude, and then get the rest of the town family out of the way and just live there. Which is awful considering the towns took Nellie in as a child and cared for her into adulthood. All of the circumstantial evidence pointed toward Nellie. And it's believed part of the reason she was acquitted was because she's a woman. A pretty woman. A well-liked woman. And there's no way a woman like that could possibly kill all those people. And now we'll never know for sure. No, we won't. But we do know that locals whisper about these houses being haunted. These houses on High Street are in great shape, by the way. They are. The former townhouse is now the Colonel Town Community House. And the three-gabled house next door belonged to Dr. Bugby. But I guess when you know the history, it's eerie to be out here. It's worth noting that the current owners of the former Bugby House claimed in a 2018 news article that they haven't experienced anything weird in the house. But, as you mentioned, give us an unsolved murder. Possibly an unsolved serial murder. And that will haunt us. Now, we should mention that since the 1920s, when a diphtheria vaccine was introduced, the rates of this illness and related deaths have dropped dramatically. It's no longer the killer it once was. And given how long it's been since the Bugby murders, Nellie Webb is no longer the killer she once was. Well, allegedly. Allegedly. We'd like to remind you guys that the discussion of this and other show topics continues in the New England Legends Extra podcast, only available at patreon.com slash newenglandlegends. We also welcome you guys to call or text our legend line with feedback anytime at 617-444-9683. You can also leave our show closing on there if you want to hear yourself on a future episode. You should also join our super secret Facebook group. You should. You can find a link on our website, OurNewEnglandLegends.com. And our theme music is by John Judd. Hi, my name is Alejandra Sproul from Boston, Massachusetts in Keene, New Hampshire. And I just wanted to say stay safe, stay healthy, and remember, the bizarre is closer than you may think. <laughs>